Where does the internet come from? Hello and welcome all. Hope you are doing well. Right now you are watching this video on Midnight Questions YouTube channel. However, have you ever wondered how you can see and hear us? After some thought you might conclude that our videos are delivered via the router in your home that is linked to the internet. But wait, the answer isn't finished yet. So where does the internet come from? You could respond that you have a contract with a specific company and pay a monthly subscription fee. As a result, the company sends internet to your router. Still, we have not answered the question yet. Where does the internet come from for the company you are contracted with now and other internet companies in other countries? You might answer that they get their internet from a primary source in the country. But where do countries get their internet access? From the USA or the UK for instance? In fact, this viewpoint is very hazy for comprehending the internet. Contrary to popular belief, the internet did not originate in a particular country or region. The truth, on the other hand, is quite different. Hello, my name is Steve. In this episode of Midnight Questions, we will answer the question, where did the internet come from? However, before we begin, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell button to receive all our new videos. First, consider the rumour that one party owns the internet and distributes it to the rest of the world. Thus, this party has the ability to halt the internet access to a specific country or location or vice versa. All of this is untrue. Simply put, there is no benefit for any party owning the internet entirely. The internet is built on participation and shared ownership. This law is what allows the internet to be as widespread as it is today. And if you're still confused about it, Let's dig a little deeper into the details. The origins of the story of the internet can be traced back to the 1950s. That's the 50s of the last century, specifically in the United States of America. All they wanted to do at the time was connect computers just for the short term. That is, a message can be sent from one computer in one place to a computer in another, a little further away. Its purpose was to assist soldiers in the event of a war between the United States of America and any other party. As a result, the US Department of Defense established an agency known as the Advanced Research Projects Agency ARPA. The primary goal of the agency was to develop a prototype network for connecting computers. By 1969, this agency had completed its mission of establishing a correspondent network known as the ARPANET. That is how they were able to send a message between two computers. The first was at the University of California and the second was at the Augmentation Research Center at Stanford Research Institute, now SRI International, which is located in the same state. As a result, this event can be considered the first building block for the internet to reach its current form, which was relied upon to create all internet-related services. And yeah, some of you might be like, wait a minute, you just said that the US Department of Defense created the internet. So why did I earlier say that the internet belongs to nobody? Based on what you've said, the internet is owned by the United States of America, which shares it with the rest of the world. Simply put, this logic does not apply to this topic. To determine who owns the internet, we will travel back in time to when the first internet network was established between the University of California and SRI International. But first, we must ask a specific question. Who owns the internet network that connects those two locations and where does it come from? If we dig a little deeper into the subject, we will discover that neither of them owns the network. In other words, we can say that the network was owned by both of them. Whether it was reception or transmission, they both required the other. And in terms of source, there is none in the first place. Because in this case, the internet can be like a cable that connects the two computers. And as a result, each of the two locations can be considered a source for each other. This simple sentence summarizes the entire history of the internet. Contrary to popular belief, there is no internet source in the world. It is true, for instance, that it was created in the USA. However, this does not imply that the United States is the source of the internet network. The internet does not move in one direction, but rather in two directions because it's all about receiving and transmitting. However, for now, let's explain the global shape of the internet map. The internet is a large network that connects countries and allows information to be exchanged between them. This network connects all countries via large submerged cables, satellites and other means of connection. Still, cables are basically the most commonly used. Thus, countries are linked together by a large number of copper or optical fibre cables. 
These massive cables can also be found in deserts, mountains, seas and oceans too. The ends of these cables are connected to servers that use standard language or widely used protocols. As a result, connecting the devices and completing the communication task will be successful 100% and much easier. In any case, when these cables are used in a specific country, they are divided into several branches that are divided into the country's main internet companies. And each company adopts a specific branch, divides it among its customers, and then establishes its network. And in the end, your router is the last component of this network. With all that being said, does this imply that the USA plays a significant role in all networks? In this case, if the connection between the rest of the world and the United States is disrupted, will the internet in other countries come to a halt? No, it does not. Let's suppose that the USA has just vanished from the world map. The internet would simply continue to function. And if someone in France wants to communicate with someone in China, they can do that so easily because they are connected to a network that has nothing to do with the USA. In our scenario, there will be no effect other than that the fact they will be unable to communicate with anyone in the USA because there are no cables or network connecting them to us. That is why they will know nothing about us and we will know nothing about them. What's more, what would happen if internet contact with the USA was severed in this case? If this occurs, sites such as Facebook, Twitter and YouTube will cease operations. And because Facebook, Twitter and YouTube represent the entirety of the internet for many people, it will appear to them that the internet has come to a halt. But the truth remains the same, as they are nothing more than websites on the internet. The internet contains an infinite number of different platforms and websites, which we can easily access if they are located in another country to which they are connected via the internet. For example, in the UK we can create our own network similar to Facebook and use it to communicate with one another or with any other country connected to the same internet network as ours. Furthermore, several countries engage in such practices already. China, for example, does not have Facebook and instead uses WeChat. They have Youku instead of YouTube. You might even be surprised to know that China does not have Google in the first place, as they have instead of that a search engine called Badu. Moreover, the vast majority of Russians do not use Facebook and instead rely on an alternative known as VK. So there is a significant difference between the meaning of the internet and the platforms that exist on it. What's more, any country can create its internet without anyone interfering with or stopping the internet. Contrary to what many people believe, everyone has access to the internet. And that's it guys, we've reached the end of the episode and we've simply answered the question, where does the internet come from? For those who are new to the channel, we specialise in answering questions that may arise when lying in bed in the middle of the night without falling asleep. As always, if you have a question in the middle of the night that is causing you confusion, please leave it in the comments section so that we can answer it. If you enjoy the video, please like and share it. And for those of you who are seeing us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button to receive notifications of new videos.